Hi, my name is Nikki. I'm the obsessive bookseller and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'd like to talk about how incredibly overwhelming my physical TBR pile is. I was a bookseller for 12 years and in that time frame, I brought home like five to 10 books a week. There was a point in time where I had over 4,000 books in my home. But I have since slowly developed an appreciation for quality over quantity. I've downsized considerably, and I'd say my collection has been significantly reduced. And even now I've kind of switched up my buying habits. I don't buy a lot of new unread books. I usually wait until I've experienced them with free copies from the library or on audio, and then I bring them home if they are above four stars. Even in the recent massive fantasy hardcover book haul I did, most of those titles were books that I've read before. I had a few indulgent buys, but most of them were books that I had read and I wanted to add to my collection. And even with all that, I have a metric ton of books unread on my shelves since I've been doing a massive library overhaul where I've taken the read books from this side of the library and put them behind me, and all the unread books that were here are now on this side of the library. And the point of that was to give me more room to expand my read collection, which is awesome because now I have two empty shelves up top where I can expand to, but my unread section is jam-packed. There is not enough room for everything over there. But I took the opportunity to reorganize them from highest priority to lowest priority. And it was pretty eye-opening on how many books that I deemed low priority or I even had a category of for books that I don't think I will ever want to read. So why do I have them? It's so hard to let them go because what if they're amazing? What if I come across a review that makes me really want to read the book that I've previously not wanted to touch? And while it's so wonderful having this many unexplored opportunities, I find it incredibly overwhelming. It stresses me out to know that I have this many books that I haven't read. And then to do the math, that makes it worse. I'm sitting on about 25 years worth of reading over here. And that's if and only if I read just these and I don't buy any more titles and I don't read anything new, that's not going to happen. And what's more, I'm just coming off of the really bad habit of only reading library books. And I figured out why, finally, that I was putting those at a higher priority than everything else. And it's because there's a time sensitivity to them. So you've got to read them right now or else you're going to lose them and you're going to have to get back in line. So the ones that I paid cold hard cash for don't get as high of a priority because they'll always be there. It's such a weird thing because the library books are ones that I'm not sure if are even good enough for me to purchase. And yet I have spent a majority of the last five years on those and practically no time from my physical collection. That is going to change. So let me show you how I've organized them, what I've done, and my plans for reading them. These are the books that I own that I have not yet read. And it goes up the wall quite a ways. And as you can see, I've got a whole bunch piled in this corner here because there's not enough room for everything. So let me show you my really high priority shelf which I am really proud of myself because almost all of the books on my recent October Tackling the TBR post are books from this shelf. But as you can see, I've got some high priorities all on down. And then we come up here to still high priority, but they're not major high. Okay, and then we get into the books that I'd like to get to eventually, but I don't feel any particular urge to read them quickly. And this is the biggest category. And then, interestingly enough, all of these are low priority. They're ones that I'm not even sure if I want to read at all. 
and then you know a romance collection up there that I'm hanging on to even though I will never read those I just I will never maybe one every three years in which case I can just borrow it from the library so logic tells me that to fit the ones on the bottom I really should just get rid of those but eh, that seems too extreme I can't do it now don't get me wrong, it is fun to be a little put out at how many unread books that I have sitting on my shelves, but in actuality I'm thrilled that I have so many unexplored opportunities at my disposal. And I absolutely love how I have them organized. It has only been in place for about three weeks and already I've been having a blast going and picking out my next reads from the top priority shelves and watching holes getting created as I'm reading more and more through my collection. Now, I'm even the one who started the Overflowing Bookshelves Challenge on my Goodreads group and then have proceeded to fail at actually working on getting through my physically owned titles. So I'm probably going to update that challenge and I'm probably going to keep you updated on how I'm working through everything. I know I have a few books that are not actually integrated in yet. And I think I'm going to give myself about six months to work through reading through titles to see if I can fit them in that way. And I'm going to do a part two video on my highest priorities to show you which titles and maybe get some feedback from you to tell me which ones I should be reading first. And then possibly I'd like to do a part three video where I'm choosing the books that I'm going to unhaul potentially and you have a chance to save them before I let them go. But either way, I think I'm going to give myself until next January to either unhaul or read titles to integrate the ones that are just sitting out right now, which I love book projects. I will see you again in a couple of days as I show you my unread high priority titles. Thanks so much for joining me on this ramble, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.